Winter is cold. No, Sherlock. Our skin can be thought of as a fence, or even better yet, the walls of a castle. It is meant to keep us, our beautiful bodies, in safe and healthy, but it's also meant to keep bad things out, such as viruses, pathogens, bacteria, and things that can cause damage to our skin. But what happens if there is a hole in the fence or in the castle wall? You can think of this as having a barrier or a layer of protection that is no longer working. There are holes in it, it's a little bit faulty, and bad things can get in and cause damage. That's similar to what happens to our our skin when we have a disrupted skin barrier. This tends to happen a lot during the winter, and some people want to know what is it and why does it happen, and other people don't even realize that they're struggling with this. They might think that it's redness or just generalized irritation, not realizing there might be things that you can do over the counter that can help. In order to understand what a damaged skin barrier is, we need to know what a skin barrier is. This is usually called the acid mantle. It's like a lipid layer or a moisture barrier. And when you look at the skin and the different layers, it's basically this oil that kind of sits on top. It's made up of ceramides and fatty acids and a whole bunch of the sebum that our skin produces. And our skin uses it to lubricate itself, to waterproof itself, but also to transport things like antioxidants and fatty acids. When your skin barrier is damaged, we're also talking about some of those top layers of skin, those top layers of the epidermis. Epi means top, dermis means skin. And when that skin is damaged, that's when we start to see and feel some of this irritation. Some of the telltale signs of a damaged skin barrier are redness, that doesn't go away, and it's not just when you touch it, but it's still there. Dryness or itching, especially if you have fissures or cracks or areas of peeling or shedding, as well as any blistering is technically another form. This can be super painful, and it can be very difficult for some people to understand why it's happening or what to do about it. Now, why does this happen? There are some reasons that are due to our products and our usage, but there are some that are genetic, some things that we don't have control over. For example, in people who have eczema, there's often a filaggrin deficiency. Filaggrin is this protein in skin, and people with eczema have a damaged skin barrier. And without the proper functioning of this protein, the skin can start to be damaged, and you get those itchy, rashy flares, especially kind of in some of the folds of the skin, in the axillary armpit areas, or in the groin. But outside of some of those conditions, which yes, need to be diagnosed and treated by a dermatologist, there are some things that we do over the counter that do not help our skin. And yes, we are going to talk about living in an overexfoliation nation, which you know I have been a resident of for way too many years. But before that, let's also talk about the sun, because you're a skin intellectual, and you know that the sun still shines in the winter, but many other people don't. Many people don't realize you can get a sunburn in the winter. Imagine being in the snow, you're skiing down a hill, all of that sun is reflecting off of this white bright snow, almost like a mirror, and it can actually cause sunburns and really damage the skin. As you know, you skin intellectual, sunburns can blister, and that blistering is a form of damage. And even just that redness, that peeling of the skin, that is damage, and that leads to a damaged skin barrier. Now, of course, sunburns can get infected. Any fissure or opening in the skin, even eczema can become infected. And that's really dangerous when there are fungi or bacteria or viruses that actually get into the skin and can cause long lasting damage, scarring, or even systemic infection. Something like, you know, if you get bacteria underneath your skin, if it gets in the bloodstream, that's sepsis, bacteremia. We want to avoid that at all costs. <laughs> but so naturally, avoiding a sunburn even during the winter is important, which means SPF is your BFF. And if you do have a damaged skin barrier, some sunscreens can burn a little bit more. So you might want to avoid some of those organic slash chemical filters just because they have a tendency to sting. Mineral-based formulas are often really pasty. A lot of them do flash back, and I wish there were more tinted options so that we could protect all skin tones and colors. But if you are super sensitive or have a damaged skin barrier, a mineral formula is probably going to be best. But outside of sunburns, what if you're already applying your sunscreen diligently, but you're still having some issues? Yes, there can be other reasons that the skin is itchy, irritated, or burning. And this is where we get into our over exfoliation nation. I think I first landed on this horrific island nation back when I was a babysitter. I must have been in like my freshman year of high school and I had that Claire Sonic. Oh, I did. Oh, and I had tons of acne. Oh yes, I did. I had purchased this Clairsonic. I had saved up all of my money. You know, other estheticians were using it. It was like this professional thing that we saw on TV and they told us to use it twice a day. And so what did I do? I used it like three times a day and I used it on top of my blemish clearing foundation that had salicylic acid, which you know, is literally exfoliating on top of my exfoliating cleanser, on top of my physical exfoliant, all of the things. And what happened to my skin? 
The acne didn't go away. I literally scrubbed at my skin until it was waxy. There was this patch of dryness around the kind of corner of my mouth, and then there was just like this waxy texture. And I was trying to cover it up with powdered makeup because I was trying to go, you know, math tutor this child because that was my job. And what was I, like ninth grade? But I had this waxy patch and nothing would stick to it. The makeup just wouldn't stick and I was freaking out because, you know, my acne was my biggest insecurity and here I'm walking around with a greasy patch on my face and I thought it was oil. It was not, but because I thought it was oil, what did I do? I used my oil control cleanser and it burned. So I washed that off immediately because my skin is red and inflamed, but even water was burning my skin. I had unknowingly stripped off the top layers of my epidermis. I was exposing the skin layers underneath that aren't even ready to, you know, desquamate off and float off into the world and become dust. I had overly damaged my skin so badly that it wasn't even flaking anymore. It was just raw. And that is something you want to avoid at all costs. Now, this overexfoliation nation can lead to that for people who are using exfoliants way too much or just too much for their skin. If you use the Ordinary's AHA BHA peeling solution three times a day when you're reapplying your sunscreen? Probably not a good idea. If you are doing chemical peels in office, or if you are on antibiotics, or if you are using a rotating Clairsonic Neutrogena Wave type sandblaster thing to the face, that can definitely do it. And exfoliation is amazing. It makes our skin look so glowy and smooth. It helps with fine lines and wrinkles, and it just makes us look delicious. Delicious, 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 delicious. Delectable, delightful. It makes us look all the things that we want. It's like the best thing since sliced bread. However, there is always a way to overdo it. And often that's what happens to people when they have a damaged skin barrier. Now, outside of using the exfoliating products, also using way too many things and not knowing how they interact. Think about it. I was on antibiotics, which thinned out my skin. I was using a Clarisonic manual exfoliation. I was using that with multiple, multiple products that had different acids, AHAs and BHAs in them, which exfoliate the skin. And I didn't realize how many things I was layering up. And for a lot of people, even if you just have multiple steps in a routine, if you're doing a 16 step K-beauty routine and your skin isn't cut out for it, or those ingredients are working together in a bad way or causing irritation, such as heavy acids, retinoids, and benzoyl peroxide and a strong vitamin C, that can cause a lot of damage. And I know that you're a skin intellectual, but there are a lot of people out there who just see actives, like from the ordinary, think they're amazing, go pick them up and not realize how they're combining them or how that could cause damage to the skin. It's also important to point out though, sometimes it's at no fault of our own. It's not because we didn't reapply sunscreen. It's not because we're using the wrong products. Sometimes it's just our skin and it's just the weather. Usually when the weather and the climate gets drier, there's less humidity in the air. And humidity normally helps our skin look plump and we don't realize that from day to day. But as the weather starts to dry out, so can our skin. And especially if you live in a really cold climate, imagine going outside in the blistering cold, then inside in the hot, you know, fireplace area. It's very dry, there's hardly any moisture, and that can definitely lead to the skin cracking and peeling. And even if the skin doesn't crack, if the skin ever looks like tissue paper, if it ever looks really thin or delicate or it stretches when you try to smile, that probably means you're dehydrated or that you're lacking moisture in the skin. And that lack of moisture for this acid mantle, this lipid barrier, this skin barrier is really essential. That is one of the first signs that there's something that's either going wrong or about to go wrong. Some people do have drier skin naturally, whereas some people use products that can contribute to drier skin. But the more that dry skin becomes apparent, or the more of a change that is from your baseline, the more in the danger zone we are of a damaged skin barrier. Now, if this is happening, what are we supposed to do? <laughs> the biggest thing is making sure that it's actually a damaged skin barrier. Sometimes people see redness on the skin and they think it's a sunburn, but it could be cellulitis. Cellulitis is an infection that happens under the skin and it spreads quickly. We outline it with a Sharpie or a pen and actually track where it spreads. And we need to get something on that fast before it causes systemic infection. You wanna make sure it's not cellulitis and it's always safest to see a derm. Maybe you have undiagnosed eczema or another skin disorder that has a genetic component that needs to be treated differently. But all of those ruled out, and if you want something for over-the-counter, it's about rebalancing that acid mantle. So remember, what is that made of? What is our sebum made of? Okay, some antioxidants, some oils, some ceramides, some fatty acids. That's what we want to apply. We want to apply hydrators, humectants, and then occlusives to lock them in. If your skin barrier is damaged, remember it's a a little bit weakened, it's susceptible. So we also wanna avoid anything irritating. This means avoiding any exfoliators, avoiding any essential oils, or even fragrances, since even for someone who does not have a fragrance allergy, a 
damaged skin barrier plus a fragrance can be very irritating. You also want to make sure that you're avoiding things that do cause you to flare up. I might say that EGCG Epicallic Adagen 3 Gallate is amazing and found in green tea, but if your skin does not react well to green tea because of something going on in your body, then it's not a good choice to use. But usually things like gentle antioxidants, no fragrances, no dyes, very basic humectants like glycerin, or very basic moisturizers or occlusives like hydrating alcohols, not drying alcohols, which you should avoid, but hydrating alcohols, as well as even things like shea butter or petrolatum jelly, or even things like oils. Acne prone people might want to avoid coconut oil, but certain oils, especially if they are not essential oils, can actually create a really nice barrier on the skin. And oils and waters don't mix. So if you have a water base on the skin, that hydration, then a little bit of oil, that oil can stop that water from being lost. And you're almost creating a temporary skin barrier. And that's the biggest thing to remember. Our skin is smart. Our skin is built to protect us. We shouldn't have to rebuild our own skin barrier if we just let our skin do what it does naturally. Now there's always going to be people who can't do that or have some sort of a circumstance that's going on where they need that extra help, they need those products. But if your damaged skin barrier is caused by over exfoliation or by a sunburn or by something we're doing, letting it heal and just supporting it through that is the best thing. The only time we should have to fix a skin barrier is that if it's something that we didn't cause, it's not like we can just stop products and it'll get better. Or if it's something that you need to see a doctor or a germ for, you know, to get an eczema flare or something like that under control. I know a lot of this can feel overwhelming. It's like, okay, wait, don't use stripping alcohols like denatured alcohol, but do use ceteral alcohol and hydrating alcohols. Like what am I supposed to look for? I actually have a bunch of products that I would highly recommend such as these. Some of these have lipids. Some of these have ceramides. A lot of these are great for barrier support. We have colloidal oatmeal. We have occlusives. Some of these are cleansers and some of these are hydrators and moisturizers. I will leave these all in the bottom tab as well as a blog post that explains these different products and what to look for when it comes to helping a damaged skin barrier. And if this is something that you are struggling with, that your routine is missing, hopefully some of these products can again kind of lend that helping hand to your skin. Kind of hold that hand, walk it across the street until it is able to get back into balance and do what it does best. Again, except for the people who have some of those other conditions or discrepancies. If you know someone who you think might be struggling with their skin, be sure to send this to them. And always remember to stay hydrated, literally both orally and topically, to help out our skin barriers and reapply that mineral SPF and be beautiful both inside and out. I love you. I love your skin intelligence. I love that you want to share this with people to help them as well. And I love being able to talk about the science behind skincare, the biology of our beauty, and cosmetic chemistry here together. So again, be beautiful both inside and out, and I cannot wait to see you in this next video. <laughs> love you guys. Bye.